All right, everybody, welcome to another one of Christmas beer reviews, all right? I did this accent a long time ago, all right? I'm not going to be bringing it back. I'm just pretending. So today we're going to be reviewing the Shipyard Imperial Porter. What makes this an Imperial Porter? The fact that it is high alcohol content and the fact that it is an Imperial Premium beer. Um, we got a 7.1% ABV brew here. Um, every time I look at this bottle, I keep thinking I'm going to be getting a raspberry porter because it's red. It's actually Imperial. That's all it's got. This is uh, brewed by the Shipyard Brewing Company in Portland, Maine. Mm. Would you like to do the honors of reading the back, my friend? Oh, yeah. By the way, special guest Marcus over here is my bra. Again. Not bra, but like bro. You can just say brother. <laughs> you can just say brother. He's my Mario brother. Okay, so Pugsley's Signature Series is named after Shipyard Brewing Company's master brewer, Alan Pugsley. Alan is from England, where he worked with Peter Austin in the world-famous Ringwood Brewery before moving to the United States in 1986. Imperial Porter is a full-bodied, very dark, multi beer with a good roast character coming from the crystal chocolate and black patent malts used in the mash. Warrior English Fugles and East Kent Goldlings hops balance the malts with a good hop bite. The beer has an OG of 1.070, rounding out after fermentation with just a slight residual sweetness and cutting dry at the finish. The fully experienced uh, all the flavors, this porter is best enjoyed at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And for some reason, you got a photograph of Pugsley. Right I feel there. like he was popular enough, so he wanted to show his face. Exactly. I do. <laughs> if I made a beer, my face would be on the front. Why not? Pugsley, you're the man. Exactly. Kudos to Pugs. All right, so we're dealing with an imperial porter here, okay? Porters are good for flute glasses, tulip glasses, all that kind of jazz. I mean, we got... We got this over here, which is which is a, 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 a good for a wheat beer. So I'm going to be giving my little bro here a uh, flute, flute glass just to just to make things right. All right, this is uh, freshly washed, Mill Street, whatever flute glass, tulip glass. Tell the difference. They both have a little bit of a curve down the center of the glass. Um, they they really help aerate those crazy robust um, flavors pungent flavors that we get in our beers. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to taste the, the roastiness of this porter. Uh, I just need a lighter to pop it open. And you asked if I had any. <laughs> Alright, so, Marcus may be a little surprised here, but every time you pop a cap off of a, you know, frilly cap, it's probably the loudest pop that you can get out of a beer. Cool. So I'm just going to do this right now, just giving you a heads up. Boom! That one scares the wife every night. <laughs> Smell that. Jesus. What's he got to do with it? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going too far here, boys and girls. No religion. Oh, look at that nice, nice, oh, wow. nice color, all right? I'm looking at that. I don't really know what's in it. I'm thinking cocoa. I'm thinking caramel. Look at that head, man. Like, that's more. That's a. That's a palm finger head. That's a night full of head. All right. So I think I'm going to be pouring this one a little bit more carefully. I mean, these are. I mean, maybe I should have rinsed your glass a little. That would have helped out. It's all good. Show the viewers. The difference. 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 Well, that, that's pretty much the difference between a a tulip glass and a flute glass mm -hmm. when it comes to. Carbonation. I mean, I, I kind of expect them to be the same, um, as it's kind of starting to reveal itself to be right now. Yes. Um, but if you were to pour that into a you know a glass that's good for wheat beers, a pint glass, uh, you know, uh, like that kind of glass. Yeah. If you were to pour it into a uh, a chalice, I mean, there's not very much. There's so much carbonation that when you pour it into a chalice, you have all that room for the carbonation to 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 breathe as you're pouring it into the glass. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, what kind of colored head do you think that would look like? Just like root beer to the unsuspecting yeah. person. Yeah. Kind of like a roasted caramel mocha looking head. 
-hmm. All tiny bubbles. I don't see any big bubbles there at all. all no, tiny. it looks like foam at the top of this part. Man. Now, it looks black, but to you and I, you can see a brown tint at the bottom. Kind mm -hmm. of brown, reddish, yeah. reddish, red tingent. So from brown to a little black to head to yeah. foam. And basically. I think we're also kind of noticing that like your average pour with these glasses is 50% head and 50% body. So that's kind of interesting. Well, that's normally how you drink a beer anyways. When you're drinking a beer, you mix the head and the actual beer itself. Because that's how you get the added flavor. Do you pick up anything from the smells? And sometimes it's easier to... You'd be surprised. Oh, I smell chocolate. Yeah? <laughs> that's all I smell is chocolate. Alistair was here, a.k.a. Al Stoner. He yeah. would be like, ugh, put this shit away. Chocolate's yeah. for chocolate and coffee's for coffee. Yeah. I didn't mean to make myself sound like that way. But Alistair does not I sound like that at all. <laughs> he'd just be the guy going, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> or uh, and he'd go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cheers, bro. Cheers. Let's see what this tastes like. Wish good luck. Wow. Complete opposite of the other for alcohol, eh? Ooh, mother. 7.1. Alcohol gives you bite like it's 10. Ooh. But it's not 10, so you're not going to get that much more drunk in public. Ah, yeah. But um, what do you think about the roasted flavors and stuff? I mean, like, that's it's like... Almost, it's almost too much, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah, it, it overwhelms it, but then again, you know, it maybe... Maybe if you're a spicy kind of a person. You spicy? You find a lot of spices in there? Uh, I just mean like in general with like the hard-hitting motion of it all, you know? It's all of a sudden. Would you consider this more of a, I mean, I think I do, but it, we got to get everyone's opinion here. Yeah. I wouldn't consider this a, a session beer, but I would definitely consider this a festive beer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like. When you when people go out and they buy champagne or they buy wine, you know, for Christmas or for the round table, or whatever. Halloween. Yeah, there, there's not a lot you can do outside of the world of wine and champagne. But you buy a nice bottle of something like this, and you can you can pour a glass for a good four or five people. Mm -hmm. Wine no portion, you know, champagne yeah. portion, and then everybody will get a little kick out of it, right? Yeah, and those are those social parties that you have where everyone's all classy, and you know what I mean. Now, the 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 the, the twist to all this is how much do you think this costs? Not not by thinking it's going to be more or less, just generally. Mm -hmm. Ten bucks, seven bucks. Ten bucks. Well, pretty good rounding off there, actually, to be completely honest with you. It's uh, $7.95. Okay, um, yeah, that's not bad. There's a couple shipyard beers where I thought it was actually five ninety five, and I feel like a, a dummy. But, uh, you know, I'm making up for those reviews now. Seven ninety five. <laughs> um, definitely not a session beer. I mean, I can't see somebody buying six of these and being like, yeah, I'm going to get freaking wasted off of this yeah. super hard-to-drink stuff. <laughs> yeah, that would be one hardcore individual, that's for sure. I mean, like, I could I could seriously have a couple bottles of this, no problem, um, but that's all I would be able to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd probably never drink it again just because of how much character it has uh, if you were to overdo it. Um, <clears throat> ooh. Now, you've had Guinness before, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't take it you're a fan? No. Okay. <laughs> now, if you compare a Guinness to this, the Guinness is smoother, but the porter feels like it's a little bit more watery. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. That it's, is uh, true. it's smooth, but because you can taste the carbonation and, the, and the, 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 the body of beer that you're drinking, it actually comes across as kind of like a watery stout. Mm -hmm. Really, really interesting. Um, I, I too have had, you know, my share of Guinnesses. I wasn't a fan of them before. I'm not a big fan of them now. But every once in a while, I will pick up a Guinness and I will say, "To hell with the world! I'm having Guinness." Yep. A lot of people don't know this, but it has been said that Guinness is the only beer in the world that provides the amount of nutrition that is needed to survive without food. Oh shit! So I watched a video actually, uh, one of my girlfriend's videos. It was a guy who basically, I don't remember what the show was called. He basically, he takes on a challenge, and he takes on a challenge where you need, let's say, ten years of experience or something, and he tries to do it in like three days. And he tries, he goes into a competition, 
Like he did, he did. Uh, imagine joining a uh, a flair bartending competition. Uh, this guy, this guy joined it. He's like, okay. He came in like like top twenty or something like that, but he only had three days of training. It was unbelievable. This guy decided, and he made he made bets with people who were doing the same thing as him, that he would drink only Guinness for a week, and he did it. Ugh. I watched. He did it. Every time he was hungry, somebody was there making him think of Guinness. Anyways, that's so just gives, it supersized me, but with Guinness. Basically. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, you could clearly tell that the guy was starting to look like he, like death, but <laughs> but he stayed alive, and this guy was up to like nine freaking Guinnesses a day just to make up for all the meals and all wow. that. Yeah, he was only uh, other than that, he was only allowed to have water. <laughs> Just to prove the nutri nutritional values, because of course orange juice, all that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're stuck on a desert island and you have a a plane full of Guinness, you'll, a, you'll you'll live. Bring a forty. Okay, you Guinness. Did not know that. That's very interesting. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're t that's just talking about beer here, but you know we're we're getting back to Pugsley and his uh, signature series of beer time. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I want to try this now. Now that there's not so much head that it's yeah, all it, head. it it does get better though. The more you drink, the tastier it gets. Yeah, at first it's it's, it's thick too, right? What so the? It seems like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't. surprises me all the time when the coaster sticks to my glass and I end up with something in my lap. All right, so I think we're pretty done here. I mean, we'll finish this bottle, yeah. But the question remains: What would you rate this beer? You can oh. rate it a five. You can rate it a ten. It's up to you, man. It's your own rating. I usually I usually do my ratings at the ten, anyways. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, we're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, shit. I'm trying to think. It's a toughie. It is a toughie because I'm not into the dark, heavy beers like Guinness or like this. But um, well, what I normally do is I say, okay, you know what? I'm rating this beer on the fact that I've had this or not had this before. The fact mm -hmm. that it's this kind of beer. The fact that I can't stand this and I like this. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Gee, take your time, man. Take oh, your time. I'll, well, I'll think of my rating at the same time. It's not a bad beer at all. It's just not a beer that I'm used to, so I'll probably give it a... Don't deduct it points from being uh, not of a section beer. That's true, that's true. Okay, for not having it before, not being used to it, yada, 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 I'll, I'll give it a... Yeah, I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. Considering your first initial reaction to the beer, I take that as a pretty good beer. Yeah, but it, it, it is good. The first sip was like... Ah! And then I felt, and you know, exhumed the flavor, and now it's like, okay, yeah, this is actually pretty damn good. You so. actually, you probably, uh, I don't know Coaster. if you, <laughs> Coaster is rolling it's gone now. Are. It's, it's gone. right, right down there. No, I was gonna say though. I mean, you went from not liking it all to, hey, here's a seven point yeah. five. So you've just by having this beer, you have essentially refined your palate in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So that opens you up to other beers. That is true. Aside from the crappy Canadian beers that I normally drink. I mean, like, I have a lot of pumpkin beers, and I love pumpkin beers, but I just got to the point where I just got so sick of that pumpkin taste. Man. Yeah. I can't have another pumpkin beer unless it's, like, a specific kind of pumpkin beer. Mm -hmm. um, but with this, three months down the line, I'm sure, two months, one month down the line, I'm sure I'll be able to pick this up and say, damn, it's a fine beer. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Um, I'm usually very high me with my ratings, um, but I've had a lot of beers, and I can at least tell you that from a little bit more of a refined palate perspective, this is pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it had a higher alcohol taste at the beginning compared to now, um, you're just getting used to the alcoholic taste, but it, it really does add characteristic to the body. It adds characteristic to the flavor. To the soul. To the soul. <laughs> All right, we're looking at... Uh, <coughs> 45 seconds left in our rear review before I can't post it on YouTube. So I think that's I think that's it. Yep. I think we're done. That's that. Can you remember my closing line? The closing line is play it safe, don't drink and drive, drink responsibly, and uh, just cherish the things that we have. I will drink to that. I agree. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. <laughs>